Hello everybody and welcome to today's devotional. Our thought today is going to come from Hebrews chapter 13, verses 20 and 21 for the most part. The This is towards the end of the letter. The Hebrew writer is kind of, uh, kind of providing this, this conclusion to this letter. He says, Now may the God of peace who brought up our Lord Jesus from the dead, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you complete in every good work to do his will, working in you what is well-pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Now, obviously, this is a, a uh, kind of a prayer. It's a, it's a desire for the Hebrew writer that he wants these brethren to grow. They, he wants them to continue to be, to be profitable for the Lord. But the way that he words this, first of all, he talks about the God of peace who raised up Jesus from the dead, Jesus being that great shepherd of the sheep, he's he's our leader, he's the one who protects us and takes care of us. Uh, the blood of the everlasting covenant is certainly the means by which uh, we can be made complete in every good work. Uh, and certainly the, that the blood of the everlasting covenant is the means by which we are the sheep of the great shepherd. The verse 21, when he says, make you complete in every good work to do his will, working in you, notice this phrase, what is well pleasing in his sight through, through Jesus Christ. You think about the religious community and people who consider themselves spiritual and religious, and for many of them, while they claim and want to think of themselves as seeking to do what God wants and and being spiritual and religious, thinking they're saved, when push comes to shove, the majority of them, the question becomes, is, are they doing what is well-pleasing or seeking to do what is well-pleasing in God's sight, or are they doing and seeking to do what is well-pleasing in their own sight? And we've talked before about good works and how that good works are defined by God. It's defined by uh, the scriptures. It's not, it, we don't get to define what good works are. And yet people in our religious community, they basically can chalk up just about anything they want to. And eventually you can, I mean, if you really try hard enough, you could justify just about anything as a good work in some form or fashion. And the idea of being well-pleasing, it's... The idea of being well-pleasing fits very well with the idea of doing his will. Because it requires submission. It requires us to let go of our own interests and our own wants and desires and our own biases and give ourselves completely to the will of the Lord. That is the only way to be well-pleasing to him. We know that we have to have faith. And the Hebrew writer in Hebrews chapter 11 says that without faith, it is impossible to please the Lord. But the interesting thing about the faith that he describes in Hebrews chapter 11, and indeed that the New Testament describes throughout scripture, is that faith without works is dead. You can't just claim to believe in God and believe in Jesus and that that counts for something. James himself addresses that. Do you think faith, the idea of simply belief alone by itself will save you? He says, even the demons believe and they tremble. That doesn't mean anything. Of course they believe. But are you willing to do what God tells you to do? And that's why he gets into chapter 2. He describes being a doer of the word and not a hearer only. Well, people push back on this because of passages like Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 8, for instance. He says, By grace you have been saved through faith and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. And people try to they, they, they accuse people like us who believe that it's necessary to obey the Lord uh, of believing in legalism or trying to push and bind legalism. And they'll come to Ephesians 2.9 and they'll say, see, works do not save us. Uh, in fact, up here in verse uh, 5, by grace you have been saved. And again in verse 8, by grace you have been saved. Well, indeed, absolutely. And I'm not in any way contradicting what Paul says. By grace we have been saved. That is not something that we of ourselves could ever earn. But notice that Paul says, we have been saved through faith. 
Well, faith requires, it, faith, the term faith doesn't just mean belief. It means conviction, persuasion, even when it's translated. The term faith and belief or believe in the New Testament is the same term. And it means conviction, persuasion. If you're convicted and persuaded about something, you're going to act. That is the implied component, the, compl the implied characteristic of belief or conviction and persuasion. You're going to act on it. Well, the gift of God certainly is the salvation that has been provided. And by grace, we've been saved. And it's not anything that we've done to earn it because we can never earn salvation. However, that doesn't change the fact that God has placed conditions on the access to grace. In Romans chapter 5 and in verse 2, Paul says we have access to grace, but it's conditional. He says, talking about Jesus Christ, through whom we also have access by faith into this grace in which we stand. Well, faith requires action. And as we know, as I mentioned earlier in Hebrews chapter 11, all of those people that are mentioned by faith, Noah, by faith, Enoch, by faith, Abraham, by faith, Moses, and so forth. Every single example that is brought up, every one involves works of faith, not works of look, let me see what I can do to earn salvation. They were works of faith. What does that mean? It's, it, it's another way of saying works of obedience. They obeyed God. They did what God told them to do. Thus, James says, Abraham was justified by works. And not just, I believe in the Lord, but I'm not going to do what he tells me to do. No, his faith was shown by his willingness to obey. Well, so going back to Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 9 now, notice he says, not of works, lest anyone should boast. I agree. Because we could never earn it ourselves. We could never be so perfect that our works earn us salvation. However, the very next verse from what everybody, verse 8 and verse 9, everybody focuses on that. And then they say, see, that means baptism. Well, that's a work. And repentance, even though most people wouldn't argue with repentance, guess what? Repentance is a work. Uh, confession, guess what? Confession is a work. Verse 10, we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for what? For good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. This reiterates the fact that what we noted regarding good works, we don't get to define what a good work is. We don't get to just say, well, we're going to have uh, at our at our at our congregation. We're going to install a soup kitchen, and we're going to install a basketball court, and we're going to install a playground, and we're going to install all this stuff because that's a good work. But why is it a good work? See, good works require scriptural authority, especially as a congregation of God's people, but even as an individual. Who, if I'm going to think about good works, a lot of times people think about good works as being things that are polite. Or, for that matter, things that, that help someone else. These, these, I'm seeking to help people. Well, okay. But are we using that standard to define good works based on how man thinks good works should be defined? Or are we using the standard that God has established to define good works? Helping people is a noble goal. But good works for an individual are not the same good works defined as for a congregation of God's people. Paul makes that very clear in 1 Timothy when he describes uh, widows. He describes widows who are widows indeed versus those who are widows who are not widows indeed. They are not to be taken into the number provided and taken care of by the church. He says, let not the church be burdened. So there's different standard or there's a different uh, uh, definition of good works for a church versus for an individual. Not to say that there's not some overlap, but notice in verse 10, Paul says that God prepared these beforehand. He, he had already planned out not only the character of faith that his people were going to have, but what he expects from his people, what he considers to be good works. Well, going back then to the Hebrew letter. When in Hebrews chapter 13 and in verse 21, the prayer is, or the, the, the request is, that God will make them complete in every good work to do his will. 
doing that which is well-pleasing in his sight. Well, think about just the things that he mentions here in Hebrews 13 that he considers to be good works. Imagine, so we'll just look, we'll go through these. He says, well, first of all, he mentions the fact that these are, uh, in verse 22, he says, bear with the word of exhortation I've written to you in a few words. He says in verse 18, pray for us. He says in verse 17, obey those who rule over you, talking about elders, be submissive to them. In verse 16, do not forget to do good and to share, for with such sacrifices God is well pleased. Verse 15, let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God that is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. Uh, he mentions in verse 9, do not be carried about with various and strange doctrines. He says in verse 7, remember those who rule over you. Again, talking about elders. He says in verse 5, let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. Uh, do not forget uh, to entertain strangers. In verse 1, let brotherly love continue. Just in chapter 13, these are all the things that he encourages them and, and defines for them as being good works. Now, by doing these things, is there any suggestion in any of this chapter that by doing these things, they're somehow earning their salvation? No. No. Again, what is this? I'm fulfilling the Father's will, doing what is well-pleasing in His sight, because He has ordained good works that He has defined to be done by His people, and that's what He expects of us. We don't get to define those. We don't get to just make up a standard by which we say, well, this is a good work and that's a good work. And our church is going to be involved with this because we're going to call that a good work. And God will have to be pleased with that when the Hebrew writer makes it very clear that what is well-pleasing to him is fulfilling his will by fulfilling his standard of good works. All right, that's the daily devotional for you today. Lord willing, our next devotional will be on uh, Tuesday, tomorrow at 6.30, hopefully. Uh, tonight's just going to be a little late. I apologize. But uh, hopefully tomorrow at 6.30 will be the plan. Thank you, everybody.